yes, it is finally time. You and I are going to play with one of the blocks from this awesome So Colorful Patchwork quilt. It was designed by my good friend Susan Emery. The block is super simple, but there's a million different things you can do with it. Let's get started. That is right, everybody. I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome back to another great patchwork episode of Making It Fun. We're gonna be breaking down this really fun pinwheel star block. It's actually technically on point. There's a lot we can do with this. It's super, super simple. Now, I do wanna point out real quick, there are only two ways to get the official pattern with all the color layout and everything because this is all part of our awesome So Colorful program. So let's just take a moment and remind you what So Colorful is. So Colorful is a wonderful color theory educational tool that is also a ton of fun. So you see over here on the wall, I've got the panel. This is a fused, pre-cut, laser fused, super simple panel that comes in this great box right here. And in that great box, you get this super cool book that talks about how you can learn more and more about color theory. If you've been watching my work develop here over the last few months, you can see I'm doing a lot more with big, big, bright, colorful quilts, and I believe I'm learning a lot with the colorful theory. I'm loving playing with the colors and the way they all work together. Of course, it's been super fun. Um, I love it. In the back of the book, so this book, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a educational materials. It does talk about um, a lot of information and combining colors, how to work with color. Um, when you get to the middle of the book, it talks about how to build that panel right there that comes in that box kit right there. But what I want to also point out is we have a bag kit to make the big, beautiful patchwork quilt, right? And this is the one that Susan quilted here. You can see she used some really fun swirl style uh, quilting on the long arm with the pantograph. And then on my quilt, um, I just did a bunch of free motion machine quilting and I did it only in the white fabric so I can show the beautiful cotton couture. That's the high density cotton solids from Michael Miller Fabrics. So at any rate, really, really fun. So you can get the kit and make the quilt with the pattern or in the back of the book from the box are all of the instructions right here to make this. Now the block as I've mentioned multiple times already today is super, super simple. It is a pinwheel in the center and then just some basic half square triangles and some snowball blocks as they, snowball, blah, 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 snowball blocks as they go around, right? But um, I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Now I've colorized this with a lot of different colors and that's one of the keys to the pattern. Not every block is constructed the same. So some have three colors and one other, some have two colors and two others, and that's really what makes the patchwork so awesome is it's actually also a color wheel, a beautiful rainbow gradient that you can really work with uh, as a teaching, working, structural tool as well. Last thing I'll point out about the, the panels is I'm bouncing all over the place. I did, yes, I just had my cup of coffee. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. The panel itself, I'm showing you the full size over here, but this would be be awesome in your studio this lovely little version like this with the quilting and then you can keep the instructional information on the back for your color theory as well so at any rate we are super excited we've been having colorful week all week right here at making it fun let's dive into this patchwork and get rocking and rolling I'm gonna follow the instructions as they are laid out in the book for this. Um, and in the book, it starts with the center, <laughs> as a lot of good blocks do, right? We're gonna start with the center of the block. And this is a new unit for all of us here at Making It Fun. I believe it is called a quarter square triangle, which means that a quarter of it is the triangle where the rest of it are triangles and other triangles if you're really into geometry. We're gonna make four and I'm gonna do different colors. I've got three made. So let's finish off the fourth one, but let's go a little bit back for our prep work. To do these, we're actually gonna need two different size squares. Now of the background, and let me make sure I'm getting this right. And to make sure I'm getting it right, I'm just double checking my work. Of the background, I have three and seven, eight, inch squares. Those are gonna be cut diagonally just one time. So one edge across. And those will be referred to in the rest of the pattern as the large triangles, okay? Large triangle. We need to make small triangles also. Small triangles will be made of the background as well as the colors that you're using. Okay, so you'll need 
the color and the background cut at four and a quarter, so larger. The other one was three and seven eighths. This is four and a quarter. What we're gonna do with this, if you hadn't already guessed due to the mathematical increase, is we're going to double dice it and slice it. So once across diagonally that way, I'm gonna drop this bad boy over here. We're gonna cross secondly that way. And now I'm gonna have four of those, and those are what we refer to as the small triangles. I um, will mention to you that, <laughs> slow down, because I've already been doing some prep work and I didn't go as slow as I should have. So the nature of this here, this triangle, when we build these together first, we need to build these this way so that then they can come back in and fit back together on our large triangle that way. So I'm just gonna start by marrying up this bottom corner and following up this straight edge this way here. So as I come under the presser foot of the machine, I'm gonna sew from that bottom corner up through the top, all the way through. You will be doing a lot of triangles in the center of this project. So if you're the kind of person, maybe a little more advanced in the quilting world and you've gotten into the habit of pressing your seams open, you may wish to do that today. I won't fight you on that one. For me, I'm just gonna press over to the darker of the two fabrics. I'm holding the dark fabric up in the air. I'm gonna hit it with my iron. I'm gonna press it right over like yay. And then the next thing I need to do is I do, I need to come back in and I need to join this into one of those large triangles as well. So one of the things I have found to help with accuracy over time is I'll often take just a moment and kind of just give myself a little finger press creating a center line because yes, of course, that center line can match up with the seam line and I can lay that like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew now across the bottom of these. with our quarter inch seam allowance. And at this point, as I come to the iron, I'm gonna need to press into the larger triangle. Even though it's the lighter of the colors, I really need to do that. It just is gonna make fabric lay much more nicely. And you can even see possibly a little bleed over. And the other thing I was gonna point out is I have not really gone through and trimmed off these tails. You certainly could. I don't know if it's all that important or not, but as I get ready to put this pinwheel back together, let's talk about how this is gonna work. So then what's happening as I have my small colored triangle, it's gonna pinwheel around. So I need to have this little notch touching the other color, if that helps. So then as I bring it around, I'm looking for my periwinkle there. Then this little notch, I feel like I have that wrong. There we go, you see? It's leaving the large triangle as the gap in between. As we go, and that there forms the pinwheel just like you see. Okay, so then once your pinwheel's built and you know right where everything's gonna go without moving everything around, just take a moment and sew two of your squares together, or your units together now, they should be square. Let's just do that together. As the two blocks are built, now hit them with the iron. And again, you're gonna kinda just iron them to the way that the bulk works for you. But if you can do the same, so this one I iron from the small triangle to the big triangle. So when I think about that, I'm gonna do it to the other side just the same. So I'm gonna iron from the small into the large. And what that does is it gives me the opportunity to nest those seams. So the seams are kind of lying on opposite sides of the back together. That'll help do some of that bulk. And I look at that, I almost did the, the big no-no. There we go. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> you caught me last week. I don't, I'm not gonna let you catch me this week. Okay, so now that those are joined, we're just gonna sew that right across. Just lining up that center seam, make sure everything goes as we need it to.
Take a moment, press that nice and flat, and then we're gonna move on to the outside edges. And they're super, super easy. Following along with our instructions, we're gonna make the half square triangles next. And the half square triangles in the block are the corner units. So you built the center, we're gonna do these ones now. And to do the half square triangle units, they look like this. I've got a bunch already built up, but the other, <laughs> let me show you how to build them yourself because that's not going to do you any good. Okay, so what we need to do for this is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take and draw a straight line from one edge to the other, or one corner, excuse me, to the other. I like to use a fine tip Sharpie so I get a crisp little line because that's actually going to be the line that our seam allowance edge guide runs on. I'm going to drop that right sides together with my two solid fabrics. You figure that one out on your own, please. And now as I come over to the machine, look very carefully. I'm actually lowering the foot with the edge guide now on that line. I'm going to sew over one side. I like to come all the way to the end, lift my foot up so I have a little slack on my thread. And I'm just going to rotate right around, drop that presser foot again. And this is effectively making two half square triangles that will be the same. They're gonna be the same background and neutral fabrics. So as you come over here, use your ruler to keep your hand safe, cut along the line you just drew, and then same thing. These will press to the dark side whenever you can. It's a good habit to get into. Hold that dark fabric in the air. Press it over here. And a lot of folks that make their half square triangles this way really like to trim them or true them down. When they're finished, you're gonna want them to be three and a half inches. And the way you do that is you find a diagonal mark on your ruler, lay it along your block, and go as far past that three and a half mark as you can and still make a shave on both of these edges. Rotate 180 degrees, drop that ruler, find that line, hit that three and a half inch corner perfectly. And now as you trim this, you have a beautifully squared half square triangle that has the diagonal blah, blah, blah. Perfect, but that's why diagonals are used that way. If you like to can do construction, that's why diagonals are used that way. At any rate, so that's four half square triangles needed for the block. I'm gonna ask you to make those. I made a couple of the same color. We're only gonna need one of each color for the way we're doing our block. The third patchwork piece you're gonna need for the block today is going to be the outer edge here, this rectangle. If you're clever at quilting, you've already busted me. Of course, this could have been divided into these exact same two half square triangle units, and you're welcome to do them that way if you prefer. I'm gonna teach you something fun, which we call snowballing. So I'm gonna have a rectangle, and that rectangle has gone missing. There she is. She, or it, is three and a half by six and a half. These squares are three and a half square. I'm hoping you can see I've already drawn a diagonal line across them. I'm going to lay that, and if these were prints, they would be right sides together. I'm gonna go ahead on over to my sewing machine. And now as I approach the sewing machine, that line is a sewing line. It is not for the edge guide, it is actually for the needle. So as I drop the presser foot, I can see that line right through the center of my foot. I'm gonna sew right along it. And you can chain piece a bunch of these at once, but you have to go ahead and trim and press this side before we can do the other side. So what that means is I'm gonna come back on over to my cutting table. I'm going to use the ruler to keep my hand safe. I just cut a quarter inch seam allowance off the corner. So this can fold open like that. And for this, if you would like to press it over into the white area, you can. On my block, I pressed the first one into the dark fabric, but I couldn't press the second one over. So technically, I think it's gonna be just as efficient to do it this way, but you could get some bleed through I'm just trying to teach because I love the sound of my voice. Uh, and the best thing about being my own editor is I get to listen to it after the video's over for quite some time to make the videos awesome. So back to work, back to work, back to work. Here we go. And we're almost finished, kids. So I have this triangle already safely secured, sewing in place, trimmed off. So the next one, we got to make sure we get a triangle out of the deal. We got to make sure we get a point. So I'm just going to put that same exact 
rectangle on there, excuse me, square onto the rectangle. I'm just measuring, looking outside edges are all good. We're going to sew across this straight line. Once that second square is on, we're going to go ahead and trim it off as well. Then we can come on over to the ironing surface and we'll press this over. And then let's do a little review of all the parts and pieces of the block so I can let you get into your sewing space, right? So for the block itself, the center is built out of those quarter square triangles and those little units, we had the four and a quarter inch triangles that made into the little quarter pieces and the three and the seven eighths, which were the background. Go back to the beginning of the video if you don't know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, the, you'll need four of those, different colors, the same, however you like. We have the half square triangles, you'll need four of those, but remember you're making two at a time when you're making them. So if you're staying within the same colors, don't get carried away with your cutting because you'll only need to make two when I'm saying you need four total. Again, check the math. It's fun. This is why I love quilting math. Okay. And then lastly of the fun snowball rectangles, right? You're going to need four of those. Those will be dropped into the project with that triangle pointing out that way. So I'm going to hold this still, let the camera focus in so that it can give you a nice good layout so you can see that one more time. And then I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching today's tutorial. I hope this has encouraged you to start playing with these incredibly fun pinwheel patchwork blocks that are on point. Like I said, you can do a bunch of different things with them. As I was working on the graphic layout of this, I actually found a whole new design I want to teach you very soon. So do stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have that little bell to be notified when we put up new videos. Of course, if you are sheltering safely at home, continue to do so. We wanted to bring you some wonderful splash of fabulous color this week because we are having so much fun being creative. I want to ask you all to stay safe. And the other reason we chose this project this week is these wonderful boxes and those other fabulous big kits to make the whole size patchwork quilt are already in the local quilt shops in your community. So please pick up the phone, drop an email to your local quilt shop and see if you can purchase remotely online while you are staying safe at home and sewing with me right here and making it fun. We'll see you in the next video. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another helping of fun.